Legends speak of this Pokemon causing earthquakes and altering landscapes with its mere presence. Its massive frame and rugged exterior make it an imposing figure in the Pokemon world. Whether it's scaling mountains or dominating the battlefield, this Pokemon's raw power and indomitable spirit make it a true titan among Pokemon. Welcome, Tyranitar. Despite having an absolutely ferocious appearance as a Tyranitar, its first stage is the adorably charming Larvitar. As its name suggests, this is the larval form and will undergo a metamorphosis only when it has eaten dirt. You heard me right. Dirt. You talking to me? This Pokemon is born underground and will eat its way to the surface. When it has consumed enough of the earth, it will enter into its first transformation or evolution, leading to Pupitar. Or, in the games, it will evolve at level 30. Again, as the name suggests, this is the pupil stage of Tyranitar. Its body is developing into an absolute tank. However, at this point... It sort of reminds me of Giada from the Food Network. It has a giant head and tiny arms. The primary form of transportation for Pupitar, since it has no legs, is to blast gas out of its ass. Yes, you heard me right. It'll use compressed gas from inside of its body as a form of propulsion. And this can generate enough force to knock down mountains. The gas can decimate mountains. And after it's done crop dusting the planet, Pupitar evolves into the monster known as Tyranitar. This stud of a Pokemon is the second pseudo-legendary Pokemon to be introduced into the Pokemon universe and is one of only two pseudo-legendary Pokemon that is not a dragon type, the other being Metagross. It boasts an incredible 600 base stat total with attack and defense being the two highest stats, followed closely by its HP and special defense. This affords Tyranitar the ability to not only tank hits, but dish them out. This power contributes to Tyranitar's insolent and uncaring nature. It is extremely violent, resulting in the total destructions of mountainous terrains. It'll go on rampages and it destroy houses, and it'll even force cart cartographers to redraw maps because of the destruction it can cause. In the Galar region, Tyranitar will engage in epic battles against Duraludon, fighting over women, I mean resources, and territory. With its ability Sandstream, it can also summon a sandstorm that gives it a boost in its special defense and will also chip away at the HP of opposing Pokemon that are not immune to the sandstorm. If the power of Tyranitar isn't terrifying enough, it also has the ability to Mega Evolve. And according to the Pokédex, the power that is rushed into Tyranitar forces its back to split open, resulting in irregular spikes to form around its body. And at this point, the only thing that Mega Titar knows is destruction. There have even been instances where it will disobey its trainer's orders just to go on a rampage, having the highest attack and defensive stat total of any dark type and sharing that title among rock type Pokemon with the mythical Pokemon Deancey. So steer clear of this Pokemon as you will be annihilated if you get in its way. That is unless you have a fighting type Pokemon such as Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan can sneeze in the direction of Titar, and it'll have Titar making it sandwiches and fanning it with leaves on a hot summer's day. Due to its rock and dark typing, Titar has the most weaknesses of those typings, with the total being seven weaknesses, and it is four times weak against fighting type moves. So as a trainer, you really have to keep in mind these weaknesses. As it is paramount, you use the strengths of Tyranitar and your overall team building skills to ensure 
A Jigglypuff doesn't knock it out with disarming voice. The inspiration for Tyranitar are fairly obvious. It is an armored, reptilian, bug-like Pokemon drawing inspirations from dinosaurs and lizards. There is also heavy influences from the popular monster known as Godzilla. However, there are less popular influences, such as it draws inspiration from Bemular. That is the kaiju from the Ultraman series. The name Tyranitar could be derived from the word Tyrant or Tyrannosaurus and Tarasque, and this is a creature from French mythology. According to the Golden Legend, the Tarasque is a beast that had a lion-like head and a body protected by turtle-like carapaces, six feet with bear-like claws and a serpent's tail, and it could expel a poisonous breath. Does that sound familiar? Poisonous gas? Pupitar blowing ass all over the place? Its Japanese name, however, Bangiras, may be a combination of Yaban, which means savage, or Ban, which means barbarian, or Kirai, which means hated, and Saurus, which is a Greek-derived suffix for dinosaur names. It's safe to say that Tyranitar, hands down, is one of the most popular Pokemon that we have in the universe. Why, you might ask? Well, its design is incredible, it's very powerful, but I also think that the challenge of training and obtaining this Pokemon contributes to its popularity. It takes work to train this Pokemon, to get it on your team, to make it useful. And I think the reward of putting in that work is what catapults it to the top of our popular Pokemon fan list. And there we have it. The history of Tyranitar. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, if you have another Pokemon that you would like me to do a video on, please comment those below as well as hitting that like and subscribe button check out some of our other pokemon lore videos and pokemon opening videos and i'll catch you in the next video peace